Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We're involved in a study of the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24 and 25. We've been focused on the question of the disciples when Jesus predicted the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. The disciples immediately asked, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? We have examined the meaning of parousia. We have examined the meaning of the end of the age. I've demonstrated for, pardon me, <laughs> I've demonstrated for you, <clears throat> I've shared with you that the Bible teaches unequivocally and undeniably the Christian age, the age in which we are living right now, has no end. I'm absolutely stunned, you know, over the last couple of months. Uh, I've read on Facebook some people who are supposed to be educated say there's no such thing as the Mosaic Age. There's no such thing as the Christian Age. No such thing as the Old Covenant Age. No such thing as the New Covenant Age. Well, I guess the disciples were certainly mistaken then because they linked the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple with the end of some age. I wonder what age that was. As we've already seen, it would be the age dominated, identified, characterized by the law of Moses. That temple represented the law of Moses, the old law, the old covenant. And so, you know, you just have to kind of shake your head and laugh, although it's sad on one level, uh, at, at people when they are so desperate, they are so desperate uh, to find some chink uh, in, in the iron wall of covenant eschatology that they're willing to make uh, claims that, well, basically, for all practical purposes, have never been made in the entire history of Christianity. No such thing as the old covenant age, mosaic age. No such thing as the new covenant age. Wow. Well, anyway, uh, I just had to just had to throw that in there a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I called your attention to the fact that in, immediately in response to the, to the disciples' questions, now remember, they're asking about the end of the age represented or that the temple represented. And Jesus says, beware lest anyone deceive you. Many will come saying, I am the Christ. Do not believe them. And I shared with you the parallel passage. Now, I, I want to emphasize the importance of this this morning uh, for the simple fact that the parallel text in Luke chapter 21 and 8, when taken into, in proper perspective, it absolutely demands that the parousia and the end of the age had to fall within a certain parameter, a parameter delimited by the apostles themselves and their generation. Here's what I mean. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 8, as I shared with you yesterday, Luke's account says, many will come in my name saying, I am he, that is, I am the Christ, and saying, the end has drawn near. Do not go after them. Don't believe them. Now, obviously, that means that it would be wrong to believe anyone who was making premature declarations of the end. What end? The end of the age that the disciples asked about. Right? If not, where do we interject another age into the discussion? I mean, this is verse 4 for crying out loud in Matthew chapter 24. So, Jesus said, many will come saying, I am he, and the end, obviously, end of the age, the end has drawn near. Do not believe them. However, what happens then? Remember, in response to the disciples' questions about, the, about a sign of the end of the age, Jesus said, 
when you see these things come to pass, know that it, well, what is the it? It's his parousia and the end of the age that they've asked about in verse 3. When you see these things come to pass, then know it is nigh even at the door. So, here is Jesus warning his apostles against believing, or obviously, making premature declarations of the end. But watch. Jesus said he gave them a sign. He answered their question. What was their question? Give us a sign of the end of the age. Okay. Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached into all the world as a witness to the nations. Then comes the end. Well, the end of what? What have they asked about? The end of the age. Folks, Jesus is answering their question. He is giving a sign of the end of the age, the completion of the world mission. And he said, when you see these things come to pass, then know that it, the end of the age and the parousia, is nigh, you see, it wouldn't be nigh until the fulfillment of the Great Commission. It wouldn't be at hand until the fulfillment of the signs. When you see these things come to pass, then know that it is nigh even at the door. Okay, remember, it would not be near until the signs appear. But Jesus told his apostles, do not believe anyone that says it is nigh before the signs appear. They're false teachers. But he gave them the signs to know when it would be near. <clears throat> so, what do we have? <clears throat> well, as I shared with you yet yesterday, Peter, who heard the warnings against saying the end has drawn near before the end had drawn near, before the signs were fulfilled, Peter said, the end of all things has drawn near. He used almost the exact language that Jesus warned about, warned that the false teachers would, would give before the appearance of the signs. Had Peter forgotten what Jesus warned about? Ha, ha, was, was Peter wrong? No, time had passed. The gospel had been preached into all the world. And Peter was right to say the end of all things has drawn near. Now, John was likewise with Jesus on that mountain. And John likewise said or was told <coughs> these things, what these things? The time of the end and the coming of the Lord. Oh, in the judgment of Babylon, which happened to be the city where the Lord was cruci <coughs> Pardon me, crucified. So John, who was with Jesus, who heard the warnings against making premature declarations of the end, but who knew that it would be okay to make the declarations of the nearness of the end after the appearance of the signs said or was told these things must shortly come to pass and Jesus himself declared behold I come quickly and my reward is with me he was, John was even told do not seal the vision of this book the time is at hand oh and by the way <clears throat> James, now this James, and who wrote the book of James, was not the James that was on the Mount of Olives, as generally believed. But James said, the coming, the parousia of the Lord, has drawn near, that's the literal, and he said, the judge, who is Jesus, is standing right at the door. What did Jesus say? 
when you see the signs, you'll know that it is near even at the door. Now look, folks, we have a choice. We have a choice to accept what the apostles of Jesus, the New Testament inspired writers said when they said the end had drawn near, the time was at hand, the coming of the Lord had drawn near. If they were wrong, then they had become the very false prophets that Jesus warned about. And that's not all. If they were wrong, they were simply nothing more than any other false prophet who has come since then. But if they were right, and if we accept their inspiration of the Holy Spirit, then they were right. Guess what? That means that everyone, everyone, everyone after the apostles and the writers of the New Testament who said the day of the Lord was near 2,000 years ago, everyone since then who keeps on proclaiming the end is near, the day of the Lord is at hand, you know, like Tim LaHaye, Thomas Ice, Tom, uh, well, on and on. They're all wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Only the apostles and their generation are the right ones because Jesus warned about anyone making premature declarations, told his apostles, don't believe them. But when you see the signs, you will know it is at hand. So you can say it is at hand. Those who follow after you will be too late. Listen, folks, better take advantage of it. Not much time left. My two-book special for the month of March 2019. These books would regularly cost you about almost $35 if you purchase them separately. <clears throat> but for the rest of this month, both books, total price, $25 delivered to your door. Now, in this book, you are going to see the definitive proof that, yes, the Great Commission was fulfilled in the first century, and the disciples were right, therefore, to declare the end of all things has drawn near. All right, we will continue with our study of the Olivet Discourse on the flip side. I'll see you there.